Hello and welcome to Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month. And you probably noticed there's only two of us this month, and that's because poor old James Bracey has been waiting in the wings at Eurobike for nearly a month now. I think so. Yeah. Poor guy. He's uh, he's been in in the queue waiting for the Zeppelin ride. Um, <laughs> he really wanted to have a go on that. I've got a product that I want to talk through, and we had budget special last month, and you know I kind of felt that. The guys that have multi-million pounds to spend on product, um, you know, they, they need something to buy. Um, but I have something from Envy, and Envy, we all know, are a high-end carbon brand. Uh, they produce finishing kits uh, for 3T, like uh, the Explorer behind me, but more on that later. Uh, wheel sets, mountain bike wheels, road wheels, uh, handlebars, stems, the lot. And I've got the Envy, 2.2s. And so these are Envy's lightweight road going wheels. Um, as you can see, they're pretty bling. They are uh, pretty bling, aren't and they? And they come with a set of Chris King hubs. Jeez. So I'm going to get the, uh, the price out there. The Envy uh, 2.2s um, with the Chris King hubs starts at £3,100. And that's with the standard uh, Shimano. God, internals. that's a lot to swallow. Um, yes, if you want to go ceramic bearings, uh, etc., etc., the, the price uh, goes up uh, a bit more. Um, so we're looking at very high end here, and we're not going to be around the bush. It, it is a very expensive. It's very expensive. We'll set. But I'll go through I some of the details. I feel scared about you even holding you, it, mate. You don't give take it to it. me. Take it, take it. <laughs> they come in a pair, obviously. Which is good. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if they didn't. Previously, I tested the tubular set. Uh, here I have the latest and greatest clincher wheel set, which is actually tubeless ready. I was going to say, they've got to be um, tubeless, right? Yes, no, 100%, which makes these quite an exciting wheel, wheel set to have, because whereas previously you're probably a bit stuck with, you know, the high-end performance side of, of running uh, tubular tyres, but now you can have clincher and tubeless ready uh, tyres on there, which I think will be a great setup for these because they're super lightweight. So you're looking at, for the clincher version, you're looking at just over 1300 grams for the wow, pair. Wow, that is um, So you're looking at roughly 410 grams for the rim. Uh, both rims are the same. Uh, 20 spokes for the front, 24 for the rear. Wow. The only negative I'm going to get out there uh, from my testing I found previously is that you do, you know, like really, you know, hard accelerations in sprinting or climbing, you do get a bit of wheel rub. Um, which is no surprise for a lightweight set of wheels. Um, but other than that, there isn't much to complain about. One of the best things about these wheels is the braking surface, mm -hmm. and they've like molded the braking surface onto the rim. Um, so they say this is pretty much equal in performance in both wet and dry conditions, and it is exceptionally good. Exceptionally good. What comes with really good braking performance on carbon wheels is heat buildup and a lot of it. So um, to counteract that, um, Envy have put in, uh, well, along with this molded in surface, it actually uh, can bead water away um, to keep that performance in the wet. Uh, but they've also input a high uh, tolerant resin that can um, work well with, with heat and disperse it very, very quickly. So descending mountains, etc., etc. you shouldn't Get a problem with the tubular set I tested previously. Uh, no problem with with no. heat built up. I, I was never concerned that something was amiss here. I did a few road races on them. Uh, performed admirably. Like braking is very very good. Um, the downside to very good braking is that it does chew up the pads and it. It does go through pads. It, it's quite an abrasive It is, pad. yeah. And it's you can actually see on the MV pads we got here. Um, track actually, they come with it? pads, obviously. Um, they, you can see it's where it's chewed up yeah. the pad. Um, so it goes through pads a bit quicker than than you know a standard carbon rim, but I'd rather have the braking performance yeah, with that. But from testing these, they're only 25 millimeter deep, but they're saying they're aero efficient enough to have some gains, but they're not gonna be stupid in crosswind stability. And I've not felt anything, but you shouldn't expect this profile at such a depth to, to be a huge issue there, no, I don't think. Yeah. But I think, they are a good set of wheels and they shouldn't be sniggered at. It's, it's a lot of money, um, but you don't, you know, every, everyone I think that has tested MVs or tested wheels like this and zipper up there and, you know, some Shimano wheels are pushing 2,000 pounds and there's other major wheel brands that yeah, yeah. are pushing the boundaries of what people can afford and have has, 
have as disposable income. Um, but it's not until you've ridden a set and you're actually you're kind of a bit blown away by them. But I'm not saying that this isn't a ridiculous amount of money because it is. Um, but there's loads of different people out there that can, you know, you might want to save a bit on the frame and yeah. buy a decent set of wheels, which is a good idea and all round really. Um, you know, maybe not pay the mortgage for a month or, you know, don't go on holiday that year. I'm just trying to think of things. Don't feed the kids. That I need to do to afford a set of these wheels. Can I have a pay rise? No. Okay. No. I can't afford because I've spent. <laughs> you spent my money on this. Sorry. Of course you did. I have. But yeah, this is an, a very expensive option. Um, but if you're into your bling and you want to, you know, yeah. upgrade your ride, then MV 2.2s are something to consider. Now, we'll go to our Roman reporter, James Bracey. Who, I forgot about him, actually. Yeah, we all did. That's why he's still in Friedrichshafen. We're going to go to James Bracey with something new from Ceramic Speed. So I'm here at Eurobike. This is the annual trade show where a lot of different brands come to showcase their new range. Often this is a time for evolution or a few new things turn up, but in this case, Ceramic Speed have actually completely revolutionized the game. This is Driven, their brand new take on a drivetrain. As you can see, it's completely different from anything else on the market. Now, obviously, for myself, this is going to be quite difficult to explain it properly. So I've got Jason Smith from Ceramic Speed that's going to be talking us through exactly how this works. Jason, would you like to explain a little bit more about how this was developed and how you came out with the ideas? Yep, yeah, sure. From a technical standpoint, essentially what we've done is we've taken the eight points of sliding friction from a chain. You have the engagement disengagement points plus the cross chaining plus the rear derailleur pulleys. So that's a fair amount of friction going on. We've eliminated those eight points of sliding friction and put all of the power transfer into two points of rotating friction. So when the teeth engage the bearings, 100% of the rider power is put through the bearings radially. So there's absolutely no sliding friction in this system. We have a servo motor and we'd also have a power meter in here too. And the rider would initiate the shift and the brains in the system would know the rotational velocity, the positioning, where it is now and where it would have to go. And based on these parameters within a split second or a fraction of a second, when a rider initiated a shift, this rear pinion would move through one of the five parabolic shift channels and then the shift would be completed. Another thing is, um, is on weight, we're eliminating the chain we're eliminating the rear derailleur, we're eliminating the cassette. We're replacing those three items with a carbon fiber shaft and a rear cog, which is essentially one plate. And this happens to be out of aluminum, but uh, the production model would probably be coated steel or something to that effect. So when you get the removal of all those relatively heavy, high mass items replaced with these items, you get an overall weight savings there. So at, at this moment in time, this is effectively like a proof of concept yeah. machine. Yeah. Yeah. So something that has created an incredible buzz here at Eurobike. And do you have any ideas potentially as to when it might be sort of available? Um, <laughs> we, you know what we'd love to do is yeah. next year's Eurobike, yeah. have this rideable and in a demo area. Wow, that'd be incredible. <laughs> Yes. It, 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 it's possible. It's not too far off. After Eurobike, we're going back to development and working on making this, this concept rideable, better, fine tune the shifting, and even get the efficiency um, higher than it is right now. Perfect. Well, thank you very much yes. for taking us through thank you, James. the new yep. driven concept by Ceramic yep. Speed. All right, appreciate it. Back to you. Uh, well, thanks uh, for that, James. Uh, did he say back to the studio? I think he did. Is that, that makes us like a real professional outfit, if he did say that. <laughs> Lol. Um, yeah. Imagine. But Rupert, what have you got for us? So, another set of glasses. And they're not from 100%. They're not from 100% this time. In the, in the name of balance, 100% yeah. wouldn't sponsor me, so I've moved <laughs> on to Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Oakley. So what have you got? What are these? So these are the Oakley flight jackets. And they were launched a couple months ago. They were. Um, and you've ridden in these extensively. I have. Uh, and we've had a couple pairs floating around the office. Oakley, for the last couple of years, and the last couple of launches of sunglasses, have kind of produced 
out there shapes, haven't really? they? So with yeah. the jawbreaker yeah. um, and now these, the flight jackets, they kind of, are, you almost question yourself when you first see them and going, what the hell is that? Yeah. And then you put them on and you see other people using them and actually, actually they look, they look Cause good. Because I actually really like how these look. Yeah, it's And I, I actually always did from the beginning. So when they first launched them, people always were like, they said, what the hell is that? Mm. They've just cut the jawbreakers in half because they haven't got this top yeah. bit of rubber, which the jawbreakers have. But actually, when you put them on, they look fine. They look a bit weird off, but when they're on your face, I actually really like them. Yeah, definitely. I think they look really nice, and uh, but they do miss this. They haven't got this bit. This is to help venting. So with the jawbreakers, I think Oakley thought that it was too intense. Right. Because they had the full framed ones, and it wasn't letting enough steam out. Okay. Yeah. See. So is this the the whole point of these glasses? Is is to improve venting. Okay. So it has both. Doesn't have this, and then also it has this, which I'm not sure uh... if you can actually see what that's done. But it is a little latch that you pull down there and it lifts the glasses from your face it pushes the nose piece back so then they sit off your face and that is meant to just stop them from fogging up well before i go into price they come with the prism lens which is a fantastic lens. great great piece of kit isn't it It makes everything pop if you haven't used them before it's, it's a strange it doesn't change anything so it doesn't change the fact of what you see or it doesn't restrict you or la di da but it does enable you to pick out you know changes in road surface and potholes, yeah. you know, especially in sort of flickered light as well. Yeah. It's kind of like, oh yeah, I did notice that. And it's, it's not life changing, but you, you do pick out a few more de bits of detail on the road, you which do. I find really interesting and uh, not interesting, but very, very helpful, isn't it? Yeah. If you're descending at speed, especially in the UK where it's often covered by trees uh, and there's shadows and there's a lot of potholes, yeah. and they are really, really useful. So to put a price on these, yeah. £185. Which is expensive. It is expensive. Um, but for a decent set of Oakleys, like that, that is, you know, for a price for something that I would happily use every day, which I do use every yeah. day, um, that's, that's okay. Back of the month! Back of the month! <laughs> Back of the month! <laughs> you can't put that in. Don't so you really in. like... Chief Wiggum's son when he introduces <laughs> that to the Simpsons movie, aren't you? The Simpsons movie, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no! <laughs> Bike of the month is the 3T Explorer, which is behind us at the moment. And we are going to use this in our adventure special, which is happening this month, later this month, uh, which we'll see Rupert, me, and James Bracey, along with film director, cameraman and do it all specialist Andrew Daly who's actually a um, scout so we're is, in safe yeah. hands with this one uh, we're, we're going on an adventure uh, we're going to travel to Wales and go on a three day bike packing adventure I'm actually really scared about it uh, me too actually me and Rupert we, we don't know anything um, you might about, not uh, know this or you might not even be able to tell but we don't <laughs> camp no no hotels yeah. Five star. Yeah. This is, as I say, the 3T Explorer, and it's their adventure gravel road bike. Uh, and it's the first gravel road bike to be aerodynamically tuned. So this is the world's first aerodynamic gravel bike. Really? Which is crazy. That's quite a staggering title that to is, have, isn't yeah. it? And so this is when 3T, uh, what, a year or so ago, burst back onto the scene saying, this is our bike and it's an aerodynamic gravel bike. Everyone was like, why, why the hell would you do it? But all of the reports and findings so far have found that this bike is actually pretty epic. And that's why it's featured in our tech of the month. So a couple of things to make it aero, they kind of dropped the industry standard of, you know, this bike at 30 miles an hour is X, Y, and Z. It's dropped that to 20 miles an hour, which is more of a realistic target on, on gra gravel and sort of asphalt road. And so what they've done is they've produced uh, Squero. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I was not expecting <laughs> you to say Squero. What is Squero, is. Simon Lewis? They've uh, produced uh, the down tube uh, and some technologies around it and they called it Squero. So the Squero down tube is 50 millimeters wide, which is pretty chunky for a down tube. Um, so the idea is it's supposed to catch the drag from the wire tires of the wheel and reduce the drag going across the bike. But you don't want to increase the surface area too much, so they flattened the back of the down tube to sort of cut that airflow uh, and to in 
to increase uh, aero efficiency. So that's where the square row idea comes from. It's also designed to work with a bottle cage in there uh, and a bottle, uh, and it's also supposedly designed to work with mud. Excuse me? Mud. Whiz mud? Yeah. What, be aerodynamic with mud on it? Yeah. Oh? Yeah. Which is a good thing, so there'll be plenty of mud where we're going. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, but if you do look at the bike, you can see it's also finished with NV kits. Um, yes, so it's got NV handlebars uh, and stem, and it's also got some wheels uh, from NV, which is their new NV G23. Yeah, so it's part of the G series, the G series, which you might have guessed counts or stands for gravel. Yep, I didn't so know. So the that. gravel series, and they're called the G23s because of their enormous 23 millimeter internal width. Wow, which is massive. That is huge. So on this build specifically, I've got a 44 uh, one by front chainring um, with a massive 1142 at the back. Which that is, is massive. It's surely, it's nearly one to one ratio. Yeah. It's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna be pedaling up those climbs. Which is great, because uh, we've got 10,000 feet of climbing to do. So. Easy, easy, not a problem, 44, 42, great. So I'm thoroughly excited about really testing this. I've ridden it maybe twice, um, but that is gonna be a true test of what this bike is. But it is pretty amazing what 3T have done and produced in their sort of first attempt back into the, yeah. the, the bike market. Um, again, following the theme of my products this month, it is pricey. Uh, so this build is pretty special for us. Um, so you can't buy this build currently, uh, but you can only buy the frame set anyway from 3T uh, for 3,950 pounds. Uh, the MV wheels uh, are just over 3,000 yeah. pounds. Uh, and then if you add the group set, the handlebars, fabric saddle, etc. Uh, tires, you're looking at £7,000 plus. So it's very, very special indeed. But there was only one way you were going to get me off-road riding with uh, James Bracey. Uh, and these, these were my demands and, and they were suitably met by 3T. So thank you guys uh, for sending that in and, and meeting those demands. But it is a pretty epic build and I'm sure you guys agree it back at home. It's, it's, it's pretty wild, isn't it? It is nice. That is for our adventure special, which you should be seeing on our YouTube channel very soon. But I think that concludes us for this very expensive Tech of the Month. Um, so that's Tech of the Month and Bike of the Month. But if you've liked this video and you like our channel, please like and subscribe. But until next time, we'll see you then. Heat molded on, what have they done? I've written it down. They've melted it on. They have pretty much. It's been melted on. Really looking forward to riding it across up and down there. Oh no, that's Yorkshire, isn't it? Are we yeah, going no to Wales? Dales. Are we going to Wales? Yeah. We've got mountains. In the valleys. You can't put that in. I can't do that. <laughs>